Wait, is neuroplasticity helping you or hurting you? If you don't know how to use it to help you, it is working against you. Here is Dr. Amy. I'm Dr. Amy, your guide for transforming your trauma into your gift. You adapted to life experiences to survive, but you are not your trauma. Join me as I teach the science and biology of trauma that allows us to be strategic, intentional, and organized in your approach to address difficult and painful life experiences that has become your biology. Trauma Healing Accelerated is where you get a roadmap for the right tools in the right order for your healing journey. When we're looking at stored trauma in the body and the role of neuroplasticity, neuroplasticity is a time game. And the longer that a person has been stuck, the longer that they've been having certain symptoms, then the more their nervous system has adapted to that being their new normal. This can work against us because neuroplasticity is always happening and it just depends on well in which direction. Has it been in the positive direction? Has it been towards health? Has it been towards expansion, growing, changing, adapting in a good way? Or have the symptoms that a person's been experiencing kept them stuck and they have adapted to being stuck and their nervous system has adapted and has made that their default. And so neuroplasticity is a time game. And when I'm looking at someone's assessment, for example, through the lens of biology of trauma, one of the things I'm looking for is the chronicity of symptoms, meaning how chronic are these symptoms? Because the longer that a person has had specific symptoms, the more that I know that their nervous system has adapted to that. And the longer that the nervous system has been doing that, has been adapting to that as their new normal, it will require more energy on my part to overcome their neuroplastic uh, changes. So it gives me an idea of just what am I going against, right? Give, give me the big picture. Help me understand what I'm looking at, what I'm working with. And I, and I, and I really, I'm, for me, that's what it is, right? Like I'm working with a nervous system. And just going back to my years in surgery, that's, that's, I, I want to, I want to feel it, right? I want to feel the tissues. What am I working with here so that I know how to shift things in the direction that I want it to go? If I'm working with a nerve that's stuck in all of this hardened, inflamed tissue, well, that's very different. That's a very different process in how I'm going to do this surgery than if it's in healthy tissue. And it's easy for me to just separate the nerve from the surrounding tissue and not damage that tissue and just separate the nerve also so that I don't damage the nerve in whatever surgery I'm doing. So that I need to understand before I actually start working with a nervous system, what am I working with? And the chronicity helps me know what I'm working with. Am I working with a nervous system that is so ingrained and this is our way of doing things. This is our way of life. This is our default pattern that it's going to be very hard and it's going to take a lot of energy and gentleness. It's, it's almost like, um, I want to, I want to liken it to, uh, <laughs> what comes to mind, honestly, is tough love that combination where I am both strong and soft all at the same time. I am both tender and tough all at the same time. Because I can't, if I come into working with a system and it's maybe encased in all of this hardened and flamed tissue, and I am only love, I'm only soft, I'm not gonna be able to separate the nerve from that tissue. And I'm not gonna be able to actually change anything. I have to be, have to exert a certain level of, um, I want to say like, it's, it's a focused energy. It's, it's a, it's a firmness. Like, no, I am coming in here and I am separating this nerve from this tissue so that I can work with it and change it and shift things. And without that firmness, I'm not going to be able to accomplish that. But I also can't 
hurt it and damage it and break it in the process, right? Just like the tree that I talk about on the 21 day journey, <laughs> our nervous system is like a tree that over the years has been bent over. Well, that's neuroplasticity over the years has been bent over. That is neuroplasticity. I would liken that to negative neuroplasticity because, ah, like I, I don't want to be bent over. I don't want to be living my life handicapped. I don't want to be living my life uh, feeling like I'm, I'm slowed down, like I'm limping. I want to be able to run. But in order to run, I need to be growing in the way that I'm supposed to be growing, which as a tree is up towards the sky. But how do I do that? If I come in and I am only soft, I might be the person who just sits by the tree and is very compassionate, very empathic, and have no ability to change it because I'm not bringing in the firmness that is also required to say, no, we are, we are, we are going to grow in a new direction. I'm going to be coming every day. I'm going to be putting in these prompts so that you're, you're forced, but it's a gentle forcing. It's not a, it's not a forceful forcing. It's a gentle, it's a gentle supportive way to redirect the nervous system. That's what we need to be able to do with neuroplasticity. But how far bent over is this tree? How long has it been bent over in this direction? The longer that it's been bent over, the more, well, both, I would say the, the more firmness and gentleness it needs in order to redirect it and not break it in the process. And so when I look at the biology of trauma lens, that is what I'm also looking for. In addition to everything else, I'm looking for what pattern am I seeing in the nervous system, but how long has that pattern been there? Because neuroplasticity is a time game, I need to know how long has this trauma pattern been there? How long have you been experiencing this depression? How long have you been experiencing this anxiety? I want to know the chronicity of the symptoms. How long have you been experiencing the brain fog, the shutdown, the gut inflammation? Because all of that I know is going to be affecting the nervous system and thus neuroplasticity. And how long has that been happening? So that then when I move into the underlying reasons for those trauma patterns, I'm now looking for what are those things? Ooh, that are going to be influencing my ability to shift towards positive neuroplasticity. What are those things that I'm going to need to address to shift it towards positive neuroplasticity, given that I'm currently working with negative neuroplasticity? And so I go through my reasons. I go through the contributing factors so that then I know which repair tools to apply, knowing that neuroplasticity is not the first thing that I'm working with when I'm working with a, a nervous system with stored trauma. The first thing that I'm working with is that regulation. But with that regulation, my goal is to help them achieve a, a period of time long enough in regulation that they start experiencing positive neuroplasticity. And so the regulation is what feeds the neuroplasticity. And I need to identify the contributing factors that are contributing to the dysregulation and have been keeping that system in negative neuroplasticity. So when I'm looking through someone's assessment and their, their story, I'm looking for chronicity to know exactly how, how long how much time and in, in regulation do I think that we're going to need to experience before I start to see shifts? And have they been doing things already that should be promoting positive neuroplasticity, but I'm not seeing any changes yet because there might be some other issues that are keeping the system in a state of dysregulation. And so that's why when I look at someone who has started the 21 day journey, when I look at someone who has started somatic work and parts work and laying this foundation of regulation, I'm looking at how long do you stay in calm aliveness when you do your daily somatic practice or 
including the daily somatic parts practice. Because depending on the level of negative neuroplasticity that they have, the, the, the shorter amount of time that they're going to be staying in calm aliveness. And so I'm looking for not only how long have you had these symptoms, but as you have been applying these tools, what has happened? And negative neuroplasticity is one of those things that will keep the nervous system stuck in dysregulation. And we get to go figure out what are those things that are keeping it stuck in the negative neuroplasticity? <laughs>